And we are back. Uh, our featured guest tonight helped create and is an integral member of one of the most successful British crossover bands of the 90s. Uh, their stage presence and stories of their touring days are, are legendary with fans and those in the industry. Uh, and their songs have never lost their playability. Please give a warm weekly show welcome to EMF founder and guitarist Ian Dench. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for your great intro. <laughs> so um, EMF was a staple in the 90s, and, and I've been hearing your music for, for decades now. Um, but a lot of people don't know about you guys as band members. Um, if I'm correct, most of you guys were, were, were you guys from a small town? Yeah, we come from a, um, a, a little town in the middle of a, of a huge forest in, in the sort of west of the UK, um, and uh, I was the only member that wasn't actually from that little town, but uh, it, this, the town was very famous. Um, I, I came from just outside, um, but this town was very famous because uh, it was sort of, uh, how do you put it? It was, a, it, it, it was a little bit like, a, you know, the, the, the deep south, the Appalachian Mountains of the, of the UK, where, and, and, uh, uh, and so... You know, there were lots of stories about the people from the Forest of Dean being slightly, uh, um, um, how, do you, how do you put it, interbred. Or, oh, jeez. Uh, and there was a lot of sheep around there. So, so there were a lot of stories. With, with, so so uh, <laughs> when I got to know the, the, the other members of the band, I was slightly uh, apprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out that, that it was all, it was, it was completely untrue and that uh, they, they were actually very, very... Uh, Compass Mentors and, and uh, very um, uh, lovely and very talented. And I met James, the singer, in a, in a music shop in Gloucester, where I came from. And and uh, um, and he would, he'd said to me, um, "Oh, come on, come and hang out in in the forest sometime. You know, we have great fun. We we did this. We got this band called EMF, and we had a rehearsal. Uh, and and we." Played death metal and in Afghan coats, and the fire brigade got called out in our rehearsal. And it just sounded like great fun, and and um, and uh, I'd been in a local band, and I'd actually had a record deal, and so so you know I'd never sold a record, but in um was that Apple Mosaic? It was. Yeah, it was. With, well done. You've done the research. And, yeah, and that was uh, Honey F, right? That's right. That's which we released, and sadly we didn't sell a record, but it was a good it was a good training ground, and. And uh, when I met the boys, we just started writing songs together. How old were you when you got signed with Apple Mosaic? Uh, what was the story behind that band? Well, uh, I was 21 when that got signed, and I'd been working on that for a long time. And, um, you know, I sort of made every mistake in the book with that band. You know, we, we had an offer from Rough Trade, because it was a sort of, cool indie band and we had this offer from Rough Trade to sign to, to Jeff Travis who was an, it was an icon in the music industry but then our manager got an offer from Virgin Records for a lot of money and he's like yeah go for the money man and, um, and we and we went for the money which is I think was a big mistake and then they tried to produce us this way and tried to make us do this and, and I said I, I really want to do something like with dance beats and guitars and he's like no you can't do that you've got to do one or the other and now, this was a time when, when the Smiths and Eck and the Bunny one were, were doing great things with guitars, but Public Enemy were, were, were being played in De La Soul, and we started to hear these beats. And we just sort of, as many young kids at that time did, you know, they, we were listening to lots of different music, and we wanted to put it together. Before all that, is it true that your father taught you classical guitar? Yeah, that is true. How does that kind of fit in with where you ended up or does it not well that's very interesting that you ask because i would say that the guitar riff in unbelievable has a little bit of my dad in it because the way that the um uh I, i'll show you i'll show you um, so the way that the um uh that the riff goes it starts off with with a bit of blues in it because I love blues music. You know, I, I used to listen to The Doors and um, and I worked out all the guitar solos and it goes sort of... So you hear the blues in that. But 
I, you know, I spent my life listening to classical music, which comes a lot of it from Spain, and it comes from flamenco music, and it has the the darker um, key in it. And so the second bit of the riff is... I can hear this coming. So then there's the flamenco in it. So I think that definitely did have an influence. And I love it that my, that my dad's in there somewhere, along with all my, you know, the music I loved and from the bands that we used to play and when we used to play the blues and... Yeah. So you guys were signed fairly quickly after forming. Um, I mean, kind of what, what's the story there? I mean, did the record company call you and, and what sold the band to them so quickly? Um, it's interesting that you mentioned Apple Mosaic because I'd struggled away for eight years in, you know, in, in that band and, and made a lot of um, contacts along the way. I think people saw, oh, maybe they're going to be something. And then and it wasn't really. And but hence, I had a few numbers to call. And I can remember calling uh, our uh, A&R guy and saying, you've got to come and see this band. And he, he came down to the Forest of Dean to watch us play. And, and afterwards, he was like, he's like, don't tell anybody else about this. You know, don't give it. Because I think he saw that there was something special there. And, um, but a couple of more people heard on the grapevine. And, and all of a sudden, we had all these offers. And it was, you know, having struggled away for eight years in my previous band, all of a sudden, just the stars aligned. And, we, and within six months of forming, we had a record deal. And, and with a year, we had a hit record. And in a year and a half, the record was number one in the States. So it was a meteoric rise um, to, to stardom. And I, I still can't quite believe how it happened. And it was very exciting. And, and I, I, I want to ask you about that in a little bit. But one of the things, while we were on the topic of the different band members, I know you've said before that each of the different band members kind of adds a different flavor in the creation process. Do you remember any specific notable additions or changes that a, a member made in that sense? We, when we went to write the song, I Believe, which was the first song we wrote, we, we sat down at my mum's piano and, uh, um, and I, sort of, I sort of played something on the piano and he was, he was like, oh, that sounds like a house piano riff, you know, and, and you know, I played a couple of chords and suddenly it went from, from uh, like just a chord, like again, I'm sitting in the piano, it went from a chord like this, to like to a house call like and and and, uh, and then he just shouted I believe and I and then I got the guitar out and played a big chord on the guitar and 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 that was it really so you know from again from a little bit of a technical piano stuff it was about the energy you know James would just bring that great energy to it. I would like to briefly chat about Unbelievable. I, I, I believe there's kind of a rather funny story behind the creation of that song. Uh, and something about a, maybe a late night bike ride and a, and a bed sit? Uh, well, yeah. Or so, is that a rumor? No, that, 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 you've just about got it right. Um, uh, it, it, there's a little bit of background to this because, as I said, I, you know, my, my previous band had been, you know, we got a record deal. I've been studying art at Oxford University. My band got a record deal. I dropped out of, of the art course because I was going to be a, you know, go and go off and you know, be a superstar. And that was Apple Mosaic. And of course, we never sold any records. It came to nothing. We, uh, and, we end, and then we ended up splitting up. And I was living in this, you know, I couldn't face moving back home to my parents' house. So I got a little bed sit in in Gloucester, where I came from, and and uh, my my mum came round, and she was like, you know, she burst into tears. You you've ruined your life, you know. You 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 had all this. You were at Oxford University, you know. You could have done something, and your your band's nothing, and and uh, and I used to um, cycle from that uh, uh, bedsit to to my across the park to my mum's house because there was a piano there, and that's where James and I were writing songs. And one of the days I was cycling back. You know, thinking about songs on my bike through the park, and and suddenly, so like, mm, you know, and I, and yeah, my to add to that, my girlfriend had dumped me at the same time, so all these songs were sort of about her in a way, and and I was thinking, trying to think of some way to say, you know, you know, you know, the things you say, your purple prose just give you away the things you say, you're unbelievable, and I love that word because it sort of said, oh, you're great, and you know, there's some, you know, bad stuff going on there, and maybe some lies or something, and. 
and uh, and then the riff came, you know, I just thought of the riff in my head, got home, got the guitar out. <laughs> And recorded it on a cassette, took it to the rehearsal, and um, and that was it. And Unbelievable was born. And and um, and it's just interesting, you know, like at my lowest ebb when I had nothing, and you ha you have some, you have the most possibilities. And in a funny way, we, you know, and I met, I'd met James and the, the other guys, and we were just, you know, we had endless possibilities. And we were having fun, and music was about, you know, being cool and and and. Um, just doing what you wanted to do, and and I think all of that is in in, in unbelievable. You know, it captured that moment. And so, Ian, I want to go yeah. to a quick commercial break, and then I want to come back and talk to you a little bit about some of your current songwriting. Can you stick around till right after the break? I would love to. 